Good morning. Joining us on the phone right now, it's Senator Tammy Duckworth. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, Doing great today. And uh, you're busy on Capitol Hill with all sorts of things uh, that are going on. Of course, there's uh, COVID things and budget things, but uh, there's something else going on in the hills of Afghanistan that you've been really making sure people don't forget about, right? Yes, very much so. We actually have, um, you know, one of our neighbors was captured by the uh, Taliban at the beginning of this year, and he is still being held hostage, and I want to make sure that we bring Mr. Ferrix home. Yeah, and uh, 50-year-old Mark Ferrix, he was working for a contractor in Afghanistan, and since the U.S. is sort of uh, pulling back from Afghanistan and trying to negotiate peace with the Taliban, uh, you want to make sure that he's not forgotten about. Well, precisely. I do think that the president's um, move to withdraw troops from Afghanistan is being done in a way that's a little bit too hasty in terms of lack of adequate planning logistically. But I also think it is very dangerous for Mr. Frerichs and the other American hostages. There are two of them um, at this point. They were taken at different times. But in, in Mark's case, you know, I'm deeply concerned that he will get left behind and that the Pentagon and the State Department will not be devoting the type of resources that they need to continue to devote to getting him back. And by the way, We've been in negotiations with the Taliban, and part of those negotiations is for return of our hostages and, and to get Mark home to his family. And now we're walking away from that negotiation t- table. So I'm going to do everything I can to make sure to elevate Mark's case and, and keep him in uh, the public eye so that uh, no one leaves him behind. Now, peace with the Taliban is, of course, tenuous at best. Is this really a solution going forward for Afghanistan, a complete withdrawal, or is the Taliban, just in your opinion, just buying time? Well, I want to bring troops home. I don't think, you know, well over a decade, I mean, you know, coming up on here uh, almost two decades now, um, uh, we've been over there. And, and frankly, I, I think we need to bring our troops home. I just want to bring them home in a way that is systematic and that we don't further endanger the troops who are still there. If we bring our troops home too quickly without, for example, good logistics support, we're going to end up leaving all that American equipment behind because we don't have all of the uh, logistics network in place to recover all of the tanks and the armor and the weapons and all of that. And we'll end up leaving that behind for the Taliban to fall in on and use. And so I'm I'm just deeply concerned that we're not destabilizing the region as part of our departure. Um, And again, for for Americans who are being held hostage, uh, this could be um, uh, absolutely disastrous for Mark and his family. And I want to make sure that we bring him home, too. And he's a Lombard native. He was working over there. Do you know how long he'd been in Afghanistan prior to being taken? Well, he had been in and out because uh, he is also a veteran. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly how long he had been in country this latest time before he was taken, but he is, certainly was no stranger to the region and had operated over there as part of our military prior. So, um, uh, uh, you know, this is this is something that um, happens a lot where we have a lot of veterans who then turn around and go back and work for contractors, looking for our government over there as contractors and um, are continue to be in harm's way and Americans don't realize that is happening. And would you pressure uh, whomever the Secretary of State is under the Biden administration for his return if that doesn't occur between, well, now and then? Well, very much so. But I also um, have conversations uh, not just with you know the Secretary of State nominee, but also with members of the Biden uh, inner circle. And I am always sure to uh, raise his situation with them as well. And the other American that's over there, Paul Overby, who's been missing since... 2014. That was another Illinois native who was taken. Do we have any intelligence, I know you probably can't go into that, obviously, that can actually uh, say that these individuals are even still alive? Um, we have indications from the from the Taliban that they were still alive um, uh, during the, nego- the peace negotiations. This had been brought up. Um, I will tell you that I have been asking for the lead negotiator from our State Department to have a conversation with the family members and with myself um, and unfortunately, Mr. Uh, um, Pompeo's uh, State Department, um, uh, their lead negotiator, has recently uh, not been willing to speak with the family. And so I just recently sent um, a letter, another request saying, well, at the very least, brief me. Um, I have top secret clearance. Brief me because I want to know what the situation is. And um, my understanding is that he is alive. Um, I don't know the status of his health. 
um, I can only imagine that it would not be he would not be in the top uh, health condition happening after having been held by the Taliban now for well over nine months. Well, we hope for all the best for all the Americans that are, are being held currently. Uh, thank you, Senator Duckworth, for bringing us up to speed on this. If there's any uh, further news on this or if, you know, by a miracle, uh, Mark comes home, uh, we'd love to speak to you again. Yes, I would be happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Tammy Duckworth.